Good afternoon. Hello. We are on our way to Dorset. Yes, we're going to visit Mapperton. Yeah, Mapperton Estate. We will have an amazing collaboration with Julie Montague. Yeah. And we will share more of the details later on. So we're on our way to Dorset, but we thought we would split the the journey in half. Yes, so we're going to make a stopover in Bristol. Yeah, we booked a hotel room. And to be honest with you, we are quite hungry. Yes. And we stopped here at the service station called Gloucester. Yeah, it's in Gloucester. Yeah, yeah let's go inside. Let's go. I'm hungry. And so this is called Red Dragon Pie and it's gluten free. And <laughs> yeah, I guess got chips and lasagna. some lasagna. Enjoy, yeah. You're really hungry now, aren't you? Yeah. So this is our place for tonight and the name is Tordworth Court. So that's the room. It looks quite simple but the good thing is it's not tiny so that's really good compared to London where rooms are usually really small and outrageously expensive still. So as we said earlier, Yoke and I are going to Mapperton in Dorset tomorrow morning and we can't wait. Yes, because it says it's one of the finest country houses in Britain. Yeah, it looks really, really stunning. Yeah. And actually just won Historic Houses Garden of the Year 2020 award. Yeah. I think they had their online ceremony two yes. days ago. Yes, and I've seen some pictures of the garden and drone footage of the garden and it's marvellous. Oh God, the topiary yeah. looks so romantic. And the house, Mapperton House, is home to the Earl and Duchess of Sandwich. Yes, but it's run by their son, yeah. um, Luke? Luke, and his wife, Julie Montague. Yeah. And yeah, we hope we can hear more about the history and how they run the estate because I think that's really interesting. Yeah, and I think that's quite challenging to run. It. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And we will film more for you of that, of course. We hope. And they also have Julie has a YouTube channel, and there's another YouTube channel, Mapperton House. It's so nice. Yeah. To check out the videos. Yes, and I, and I believe if you like our channel. You will love this channel. Oh, absolutely. So make sure to subscribe because it's really worth it. Good morning. Breakfast time. We don't have much time. Left like five minutes and then we have to go to Mapperton. Yeah. So we are in Mapperton now. This is Mapperton House and Gardens. It looks amazing. And now let's meet Julie. Come on. Hello, it's 
Kirsten and Jörg. Elbow. Yes. Well, elbow. Let's elbow. There we go. Let's elbow. It's a new thing. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Fine. Come on. You made it. You found it. Yes. We okay, found it. Great. And the house is amazing. Well, you haven't even seen it? the inside yet, so <laughs> it's to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to have you. Okay. So, um, um, this is so nice that you're here. Yes. And. Um, could you please introduce oh, yourself? Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is so nice. Um, so my name is Julie Montague, but sometimes I'm also known as Viscountess Hinchingbrook, uh, which is, well, I'm going to explain why I have that title, but it really comes from the Earl of Sandwich. So that ancestor of ours that made that uh, sandwich famous that we all know the sandwich um, comes from uh, the family that I married into. So one day I actually will be the Countess of Sandwich, which would be quite funny. <laughs> yes. Considering I do really like sandwiches. Yeah, um, we do too. There you go. <laughs> so what I thought I would do is I would just give everybody um, a tour. Yes. So, um, right. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to just pinpoint just... Um, so everybody's aware what during the pandemic we obviously had to close... The house off and we still don't have visitors yet back in so apart from you guys um <laughs> apart from private visitors so this is the kind of the part of the house that we start to give tours in when that happens but you're all going to get a virtual tour right now and i'm really just going to pinpoint sort of three interesting things which in 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 each room to yeah. make it yeah more fun yeah and um yeah i'm gonna give you the tour but i'm also gonna give you all the tour yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> and then any questions you have yeah just like ask away i might not be able to answer all of them because i'm married into the family <laughs> so <laughs> and i'm american as you can uh hear um so i think first and foremost we're in what's called the hall and what's interesting about the hall is a couple of things is the ceiling up above it's an arts and crafts ceiling so it used to be much higher but during the arts and crafts period they lowered the ceiling and then you can see they put this beautiful plaster work here mm -hmm. so this is the arts and crafts ceiling here so that's late victorian yes yeah when it was like wow. super fashionable um so really beautiful and then the ceiling was lowered in order to create this arts and crafts ceiling then I think the other thing that people always ask about is this, of course, this mantle, uh, the fireplace. We do use this. Um, but you can see very, very much up there, Jörg, if you can see, it's 1604. And that's, I'm really going to start to talk about the period of the house that we're in. So it's a real mixture. This Mapperton is Tudor, it's Jacobean, and it's also Georgian. And we're going to go into the Tudor part of the house as well. I think... Probably the most important painting in this room is going to be this chap with the gorgeous collar here, but the slightly weird hands, and I'll explain why. So this is this is Lord Montague of Boughton, and he's considered really the founding father of the Montague family. So this was painted in mm, early 1500s. I don't know the exact date, but... Um, Interestingly enough about the hands is it was more expensive, like your paintings would cost more if you would have your hands like painted in real life. Yeah. And he did it. So the painter just would then put the hands on themselves. And so that's why they're a bit creepy. So we put a plant here to hide them. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's why. So we put the plant there, although it needs to be watered, um, to kind of hide it, to hide yeah. those sort of scary looking hands. So yeah. things, like you said, I'll just, a couple more things is, this is Catherine Braganza. She was married to, she was the queen. She was married to King Charles II. And uh, she was a queen of mm, Portugal. And to either side here, I have the first Earl of Sandwich, but he was very, very young there. And this was before he became Earl. And so he was Edward Montague. And then his wife, so they get to look at each other across the room. Okay. We purposely set it up so that they can see each other for the rest of their hanging lives. Huh. Um, and that's his <laughs> wife, Jemima uh, Montague, who became the first Countess of Sandwich. And I'll explain why the title came to be. So here, 
They're just Edward and Jemima Montague, but he was a great naval officer, and the title came a little bit later. She's related to that title in a second. Okay, so again, this is the historic part of the house, and I'm going to walk into this room right now. So this is the Tudor room, mm -hmm. and roughly around 15... 40s, 1550s is when this part of the house was built. So just a couple of things in here that are worth noting is this furniture right here comes from the uh, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. So it's like it was like his ship furniture. So this was the furniture that was on one of his ships. Oh, wow. And uh, speaking of the fourth Earl of Sandwich... There he is himself. Yes. So the fourth Earl of Sandwich, uh, he is the one that the famous snack sandwich is actually named after. Uh -huh. The rumor is, is that he was playing, gambling, cards, all that stuff, gambling, gambling. That's the rumor. And that he didn't want to get his cards greasy, so he asked his butler to put the roast beef in between two pieces of bread yeah. to not get them greasy. Yeah. And, but that's the rumor. So right. we believe that the real life story is that he was a fantastic politician, naval officer, worked so much that he was always working at his desk mm -hmm. and therefore he didn't want to get his papers greasy. Yeah. And so he asked, okay. so you heard it here first. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> the other thing to mention is the rug that I'm standing on right now, which is the Obasan rug. And what I learned um, when I married into this family was that Aubusson is a town, uh, a village really in France. And um, in, oh, I think it's around 18th century, 1700s, the Aubusson was known for making these rugs for, for royalty. So that's these, and so this rug we've had again for yeah. 300 years and we just had it repaired. I mean, you can see it's been, but all this right here used to have, as of last month, used to have huge holes in it. So we mm -hmm. had uh, Doris come in and really, really repair oh. um, all of this. It took her, mm, I think, five weeks. This is the Tudor part of the house. This was the part, this is the house that, part of the house that was built first. And what's mm -hmm. interesting is the original Tudor door is behind this paneling. Mm -hmm. oh. So I'm gonna open it up. Hold on. Okay, be super careful. Um, open this up. Oh. And, ta-da! <laughs> there is with some very vintage Christmas ornaments in there as well. <laughs> exactly, it's now become storage. But you can see, can you see the outline of yeah, you can see it all. the Tudor door? Yeah. So, and then of course, you know, they came and they, because this part of the house is the Georgian part. When you go around and you look at the architecture, you'll be able to tell because the windows are different and it's a Georgian facade. Yeah. And they obviously hold all the, you know, uh, stoned all this up and then created the door over there. Oh. Is there? Yeah. So that's, I mean, fascinating, it's, right? It's crazy. Do you want now to we're in the staircase hall. So in the staircase hall is where we obviously have a lot of paintings, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go through two of the main paintings. Well, one main painting and one of my favorite paintings. First and foremost, you've got the first Earl of Sandwich. So we saw him before he became uh, the Earl of Sandwich in the other room when he was just lovely Edward Montague. And the reason the Edward Montague became the first Earl of Sandwich is because he was head of the, um, of the Royal Navy. So um, at, had, what is it called? So it was the first Sea Lord. Or... Yeah, exactly, exactly. So. He, when Charles the yeah. King Charles the First was executed, and there was that period that there wasn't a monarch, yeah. then the restoration period came yeah. through. So yeah. he, in one sense, Edward Montague, well, he did. He went on a secret mission to Holland to um, to bring back King Charles the First's son, Charles the Second, from yeah. exile, yeah. Yeah. brought him back. And that was the period of restoration. So King Charles II mm. became king, and uh, he was given then uh, a title mm -hmm. for doing that great, brave uh, task, if you like. Yeah. And he was given the title Earl. Yeah. But 
he, because he was a great naval officer, he chose a port, right? He wanted to choose a port and he originally wanted to choose Portsmouth. So we could all be eating Portsmouths right now, okay. right? But, but he, that was taken. So that was taken. So, right. so he ended up going with Sandwich. So Sandwich is in Kent and it used to be a very famous uh, naval port. So oh. yeah, so that's where, that's where it came from. So, I didn't know that. So we're all eating no. sandwiches named after a city, really, yeah. in um, a town in, in England. Ah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. something. <laughs> exactly. So then I'm going to take you up here and we're going to head up here because this is the best spot to get my the best spot to get okay, wait. Alberta. So for me personally, this is my favorite painting. This is a painting of Alberta Sturgis. She's an American and she came over during the Gilded Age, like if you have Downton Abbey fans who yes. are listening to this, just like Lady Grantham, the American, who the Countess, uh, who came over um, during the Gilded Age and she married Lord Grantham. Yeah. And, in, and the Gilded Age is really that period between 1870 and 1910 that women came over to marry into the aristocracy. The new money Americans were not allowed to socialize and go to the, the high society parties of old money, like the Astors in particular. And so what the, during this Gilded Age, mothers would bring over their American daughters to Europe and in one sense, you know, try to see if they could marry them off. And during that period, in particular, taxes started coming in. These old historic houses did need money. So they exchanged their money for their titles. Yeah. Just like what, so Alberta is just like Downton Abbey. Yeah. So she came over, married George Montague in 1905 and she became then the ninth Countess of Sandwich and, and lived over here. So I have this real love and slight obsession of Alberta and that painting would have been done in about the 1920s. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It's just beautiful. It is. Okay, so this is kind of like, this is the, the room that everybody wants to see when they come and visit Mapperton and take a tour. I can't blame them. Right. <laughs> so this is, again, we're still in the Tudor part of the house. So again, this is 1540s, 1550s. This room is called the Great Chamber and it's um, noticeable, obviously, and, and, and known, I should say, for its pendant ceiling. And this exact same pendant ceiling is in Hampton Court Palace. We're one of the very few homes that actually has a pendant ceiling because obviously it's the Tudor period, so yeah. it's almost 500 years old. Yeah. Um, but what the Great Chamber, what's interesting about the name the, the Great Chamber is the Great Chamber in, in old houses like ours, in historic houses like ours, is it was named the Great Chamber because that's where the Lord of the House would come to retire, if you like. So not retire and go to sleep, but sort of get away from everybody. So it wasn't his library, it was just his place to relax and put his feet up. Yeah. Um, and so this was the great chamber when this was originally built. This is where the Lord of the house would just go to, to rest and, and relax. But we've now created it into a bedroom. So this is a bedroom and uh, we've got quite a few four poster beds around the house. Um, I can't remember what that dates to, but... <laughs> <laughs> and this is the room where you shared your vintage yes. dresses. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. that's right. I mean, a house like this is beautiful, yeah. right? And, yeah. and it's, but it's also really old. So everywhere we go, we just are like, oh, and there's another leak. And yeah. that needs to be restored, repaired, that's broken. <laughs> yeah, so. and you know, we just said like, Last night we said so many people, us included, tend to romanticize a house like this and how it would be to live there. Yeah. Whereas in reality, it's so challenging, right. isn't it? It's so it it's so challenging that it can. It's a lot. It's so much work, and, and both I have another full time job. My husband has a full time. It's like so much work. So it's yeah. just like it's never ending. So our weekends, as much as we would love to enjoy a place like this, I'm afraid our weekends are pretty much no. work. Yeah, and I, exactly. And I don't want to have your heating bill. 
the heating bill. Well, no. the nice thing about the heating, Jörg, it's a really good question, is when my husband and I uh, took over the running of the estate in about four years ago, you're right, the heating bill was a big deal. So we built beyond um, the cafe that you'll see the shed. Yeah. You might have seen it when you came in. That's our yeah. biomass boiler. Oh, okay, bad. So oh, our biomass boiler has really helped shave that bill right yeah. down. Yeah. So yeah, so everything's heated now by wood chips. Oh, good. And eventually those wood chips will be coming from the estate. Right now, we, we're, we haven't been able to harvest our own wood, but we're looking to do that in the future. Mm -hmm. So this room, this is the last room I want to show you because it's the, I call it, it's beautiful, but I, I, for me, it's like, it has one of the biggest projects in here that I want to, to do, but it's, there's a lot, I mean, it, the cost of restoring what I want to restore is in the thousands yeah. of pounds. So it's way down on the list, <laughs> but still it's a, it's something that I'm obsessed with. So this is, this oh is called the God. West Room. I have, this reminds me of Emma, the film Emma, the what? 2020 version. Oh, right. Because this chemistry looks oh the same, my gosh. and I was so obsessed with it in the film. Did you know that the Gwyneth Paltrow Emma yes. was filmed here? By the way, they did a lot of filming here. Mm -hmm. So we had Emma, Gwyneth Paltrow, and then Far From the Madding Crowd, Carrie Mulligan, and then recently Netflix's Rebecca with yes. Lily James. Yes, yes. All yeah. wonderful films. Yeah, yes. no, I know. All very we will good, link very them good. for you. In oh, case yes. you haven't watched them, because you need to watch them. Yeah, and you'll rec then you'll start to recognize different spots. So yeah. Rebecca was the gardens. Yeah. Carrie yes. Mulligan, you'll see the whole of the. Uh, far from the Manning crowd, you'll see the whole of the house. And yes. Emma, the Gwyneth Paltrow ver version, I'm pretty sure the gardens as well. That's so, right. Yeah. There you but go. But the tapestry is like from the 2020 version. Have you oh seen it? Oh my gosh! Film? No, yeah. I need to see it. So interestingly enough, these. Tapestries are, again, they are 18th century tapestries, um, and I am desperate to get them repaired, restored, everything. So they have not been cleaned in 300 years. Oh. Yeah. And you, what happened was when, the, when, during the Victorian period, what Victorians did is they would cut the tapestries in order to hang in yeah. the part of the, the house where yeah. it, it would fit in order yeah. to heat the house. Yeah. Because tapestries, of course, were made beautifully, but they were, in one sense, to heat the house, to keep, right? Yeah. That's why they, yeah. I mean, of course, they're a work of art, but they're yeah. a work of art that heated the house, if you like. Yeah. But you can see, firstly, how dirty it is. It hasn't been cleaned, because the cost of that is thousands of pounds. But also, you can see how we've had to piece them back together, yeah. because the, during the, the, the Victorians cut through... And so again, they would have cut this one um, at, on some level. That bird, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. To, just to notice all these beautiful creatures and uh, on the tapestries, you have to get so close because it hasn't been cleaned. Because again, taking this it was a place I went to visit in in Belgium called uh, Mechelen, and it's the place to have your tapestries restored and cleaned. But it's thousands of pounds yeah. I can imagine. yeah so that's not gonna be happening for a long time <laughs> so bizarrely this is my favorite room of the house really? it's called the thunderbox loo basically thunderbox loo our toilet okay so this it probably does it look dark york or is it okay no, it's good it's good is it good okay so this is the thunderbox loo and as an american i had never seen one of these before but it's where you go loo, to the loo. Oh. And we just had it restored. The whole thing was just restored. And I'm trying to see, <laughs> there is a date on there uh, somewhere. It's, I can't see it, I don't want to stick my head in there. But um, <laughs> there we go. But we just had the bowl restored. But, but it used to be that the chamber pots would go here. So the chamber mm -hmm. pots would go here. But now I'm gonna do it for you, yeah? Now we've got plumbing. Got a flush. Wow. And we've got a good flush. So there you go. That is the Thunderbox. How oh, interesting. That's funny.
I'm going to give you all just a little kind of exterior tour, if you like. Yeah. yeah? Um, we're standing, obviously, in sort of what is now the front of the house. And um, again, the house is, I always, the house is, is Tudor, Jacobean, and Georgian. So we're going to, I'm going to take you around um, to really the Georgian facade part of the house. So there was a Georgian facade put up over the Tudor room area. And you'll see the difference. Mm -hmm. so you can see all the lead windows here. Yeah. See all the lead windows. And the lovely thing is the clematis that's creeping around. You're getting, less, luckily you came right in time to see it before it disappears until next year. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's like lovely doorways throughout for really good for Instagram shots. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So here is the croquet lawn, but this used to be the garden. Before the sunken gardens were built, which I'm going to leave you to explore once I show you, this was actually the, the garden itself, the parte garden. And, um, but we're going to see here the sort of Georgian facade that uh, we yeah. put up because it was very fashionable yeah. to have that look. Yeah, and you can so, see the sash windows, yes. Yeah. were built in between 1920 and 1927 so it was a seven-year project and I'm quoting my mother-in-law here as well it's, it's quite an extraordinary thing to see formal gardens like this uh, in you know connected to a manor house you, you yeah. normally see these formal gardens in a much grander house right so it's it's um it's wonderful for us we're very yeah. so further down here this is the uh, well this is my favorite part of the gardens is the <laughs> pool which you're going to go explore but this is where i go for uh, a dunk most days when i'm here at mapperton um two minutes it's freezing cold it's like a pond we just cleaned it recently and it really invigorates me and re-energizes me and that's why i do it because it's really it's supposed to be fantastic for energy so there so i want you to go explore that <laughs> we will Maybe you're, yeah, we'll go in there. Huh? No. Yeah, you can. Feel free to go swimming if you want to. Yeah, I'm going to leave them now to go swimming. 